This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Yar, matey. The anti-pirates be getting a default judgment. A BitTorrent file-sharing defendant has been hit with a $108,000 default judgment. A default judgment is when you don't respond to the court summons and the judge enters judgment based on what the plaintiff says. Let's go and take a look at what Judge Stephen I. Locke, United States Magistrate Judge, says in his report and recommendation to the district court. Now, a magistrate judge is kind of a lower judge that reports to a district court judge, and the magistrate judge will usually handle specific kinds of matters that are either common or sometimes easier than more complex matters, and then they issue a report and recommendation. In this case, the district court judge did adopt this report and recommendation, so let's see what Judge Locke's reasoning is. Presently before this court, and on referral from the Honorable Dennis R. Hurley, the other judge, is Strike 3 Holdings' motion for a default judgment. By way of complaint filed on September 20th, 2018, plaintiff commenced this action alleging that an unnamed defendant had infringed and continues to infringe its copyrights on Strike Three's films by illegally downloading, copying, and distributing them without plaintiff's authorization through peer-to-peer -peer file sharing software BitTorrent. On November 7th, 2018, pursuant to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, the court authorized the plaintiff to subpoena the defendant's internet service provider to determine defendant's identity based upon his internet protocol or IP address. Upon obtaining defendant's identity, Strike 3 filed its amended complaint under seal on April 5th, 2019 that, that protects the defendant's identity from public revelation and effectuated service of the summons April 15th, 2019, after defendant failed to appear or otherwise defend this action. The clerk of court entered default against him on November 13th, 2019. On March 10th, 2020, plaintiff filed the instant motion under seal, which Judge Hurley referred to this court for a report and recommendation. For the following reasons, the court respectfully recommends that Strike Three's motion be granted. Plaintiff, a limited liability company that makes adult videos, is the registered owner of copyrighted adult films, here and after referred to as the films. Defendant is an adult individual residing in New York State. Strike Three alleges that defendant used BitTorrent, a system designed to quickly distribute large files over the internet by connecting to the computers of other BitTorrent users in order to simultaneously download and upload pieces of the file from and to other users to illegally download and distribute approximately 145 films over an extended period of time. In doing so, defendant infringed upon plaintiff's exclusive copyrights to reproduce, redistribute, perform and display the films in violation of 17 U.S.C. sections 106. Strike 3 now moves for entry of a default judgment against defendant for statutory damages in the amount of $108,750 and a permanent injunction preventing defendant from further infringing on its copyrights and requiring defendant to destroy all copies of the files relating to plaintiff's works in his possession, plus fees and costs in the amount of $400, and post-judgment interest. Motions for default judgment are governed by Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 55, which provides for a two-step process. Initially, the moving party must obtain a certificate of default from the clerk of court. Once the certificate of default is issued, the moving party may apply for entry of a default judgment. Where a default occurs, the well-pleaded factual allegations set forth in the complaint relating to liability are deemed true. However, the entry of a default judgment is entrusted to the sound judicial discretion of the court, and a party is not entitled to a default judgment as a matter of right. So quick terminology thing there. The default is the failure to respond. The default judgment is the entry of judgment on a situation where someone has defaulted. 
a plaintiff seeking a default judgment must demonstrate that its uncontroverted allegations without more establish the defendant's liability on each asserted cause of action. In determining whether to grant a motion for default judgment, the court has the responsibility to ensure that the factual allegations accepted as true provide a proper basis for liability and relief. Accordingly, prior to entering a default judgment, the court must determine whether the plaintiff's allegations establish the defendant's liability as a matter of law. Plaintiff seeks to hold defendant liable for infringement of its copyrights on the films in violation of copyright law. The Copyright Act grants copyright owners the exclusive rights to reproduce the copyrighted work, prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work, distribute copies of the copyrighted work to the public, and publicly perform and display the copyrighted work. A person or entity that violates a copyright owner's exclusive rights is liable for copyright infringement. To properly plead a copyright infringement claim, a plaintiff must allege 1. Which specific original works are the subject of the copyright claim? 2. That the plaintiff owns the copyrights in those works. 3. That the copyrights have been registered in accordance with the statute with the Copyright Office. And 4. By what acts during what time the defendant infringed the copyrights. Applying these standards, the allegations in the amended complaint establish defendant's liability for infringement of Strike Three's copyrights on the films. With respect to the first two elements, plaintiff clearly identifies each one of the films by its digital fingerprint, known as a file hash, and asserts that it is the owner of the copyrights on the films. That exhibit looks like this. It's a ledger. It's not the evidence. It's a presentation of the evidence that they claim that they have, and it represents the files that were distributed or downloaded via BitTorrent, uh, allegedly. Um, they don't list the titles out of, I guess, some consideration of the defendant's privacy, with try, not trying to shame them. So there's no, tight, there's no titles here, just a hash or fingerprint. And then this uh, CRO number is the Copyright Office registration number that can be used to look up the files. Strike 3 is one of the most aggressive copyright plaintiffs in the country right now. Judge Royce Lambert of the District of Columbia did refer to them as a copyright troll, but then Strike 3 appealed Judge Lambert's ruling and won and maintains the ability to file cases in D.C. as well as many other districts. So this is a very unique kind of litigation. The plaintiff sees activity on an IP address, which represents an internet connection, and then files some kind of action. They do this thing where they file subpoenas in Florida, but they also file live federal court copyright lawsuits in the local district by IP address geolocation against John Doe defendants based entirely on the IP address. They don't really know, as far as I can tell, uh, who is behind the internet connection and who's committing the infringement until they get more information and they get that more information by asking the court for a subpoena, uncovering the subscriber's identity, and then they conduct some kind of private investigation where they try and figure out who to properly sue after getting the subscriber's identity. So this is what I do for my day job as a practicing attorney. And Strike 3 is, is pretty much the only plaintiff that I defend clients against right now because these cases are so prolific. There are thousands upon thousands of these cases. I think Strike 3 will quickly become the most aggressive copyright plaintiff in the history of copyright plaintiffs that honor is currently held by Malibu Media, who I think has sued about 9,000 people in federal court lawsuits, but Strike 3 is probably over that number now if you consider defendants, including the Florida thing, but if you're just including federal court lawsuits, I think it's closer to 6,500 right now. Next, Strike 3 alleges that the films were registered with the U.S. Copyright Office or have pending registrations and provides the registration dates. Finally, Plaintiff describes with specificity defendant's acts that infringed its copyrights on the films, namely that defendant downloaded, copied, and distributed a complete copy of the films and explains the process by which defendant used BitTorrent to commit the infringement. Accordingly, the court respectfully recommends that defendant be held liable for copyright infringement. 
Once liability is established, the court must ascertain damages with reasonable certainty. To prove damages, the plaintiff need only show that the compensation sought relates to the damages that naturally flow from the injuries pleaded. An evidentiary hearing is not required so long as there is a basis demonstrated through detailed affidavits and other documentary evidence for the damages awarded. As set forth above, plaintiff seeks the following relief in connection with the default judgment. 1. Statutory damages in the amount of $750 for each of the 145 copyright infringements for a total of $108,750. 2. A permanent injunction, we said before, fees and costs and post-judgment interest. Initially, Strike 3 seeks statutory damages under 17 U.S.C. 504C. Statutory damages are only available to copyright owners who registered their copyright three months after the first publication of the work or one month after the copyright owner learned of the infringement. A copyright owner who has registered its copyright may recover statutory damages of $750 to $30,000 for unintentional infringement and up to $150,000 for willful infringement. Courts have wide discretion in determining the amount of statutory damages to award. As an initial matter, the court notes that plaintiff registered the films within three months of their publication and is therefore eligible to recover statutory damages. Although Strike 3 alleges that defendant's infringement was willful, it ultimately only requests $750 per infringement for a total of $108,750. In cases where the infringement is willful, courts in the past have previously awarded three times $750. A three times multiplier has some basis in tort law for intentional torts. So three times $750 is $2,250 per title. So this judgment could have been three times higher. It's almost like the defendant in not responding got a lower judgment than if they had responded and lost the case. Courts in this circuit consider the following factors to determine the appropriate amount of statutory damages. One, the infringer's state of mind, the expenses saved and profits earned by the infringer, the revenue lost by the copyright holder, the deterrent effect on the infringer and third parties, and the infringer's cooperation in providing evidence concerning the value of the infringing material, oh, and the conduct and attitude of the parties. In light of defendant's default, it is impossible for the court to ascertain what, if any, profits defendant earned by infringing or the value of the infringing material. Further, plaintiff has provided no information regarding revenue it lost as a result of defendant's infringement. Nonetheless, the court can evaluate defendant's state of mind and conduct from his default, as well as the deterrent effect of damages on defendant. An evaluation of these factors weighs in favor of awarding the statutory damages in the amount of $108,750. First, based on defendant's default, the court may infer that his infringement was willful. Second, the need to deter is great in cases where infringers like defendant, through the use of internet downloads, work with others to infringe copyrights. Further, the court notes that while Strike 3 and similar adult video companies who have brought countless, nearly identical infringement actions in courts across the country have sought and received a wide range of statutory damages, some courts have awarded statutory damages between $1,500 and $2,250 per infringing work. Accordingly, based on an evaluation of the aforementioned factors and taking into consideration the amount of statutory damages awarded in substantially similar cases, the court finds an award of $750 per infringement reasonable and recommends that plaintiff be awarded a total of $108,750 in statutory damages for defendant's infringement of the films. Next, Strike 3 seeks injunctive relief prohibiting defendant from infringing the films. Under the Copyright Act, a court may grant injunctive relief on terms it finds reasonable to prevent or restrain infringement of a copyright. Moreover, a court may grant a permanent injunction on a motion for default judgment. Courts generally grant permanent injunctions where liability has been established and there is a threat of continuing infringement. A plaintiff seeking an injunction must show irreparable injury in the absence of an injunction, two, the inadequacy of monetary damages alone, three, that the balance of hardships tips in its favor, and four, that a permanent injunction would not deserve the public interest. 
Here, all four factors weigh in plaintiff's favor. With respect to the first, Strike 3 has alleged that BitTorrent allows many users to exchange pieces of a digital media file and then reassemble those pieces to open and use the file. Thus, plaintiff argues that absent an injunction, defendant's alleged infringement will be continuous and ongoing. Such continuous infringement will irreparably injure Strike 3. Further, defendant's ability to continue his infringement absent an injunction shows that monetary damages are insufficient to provide plaintiff with relief. Next, the balance of hardships favor strike three as it is axiomatic that an infringer cannot complain about the loss of ability to offer its infringing product. Finally, enjoining defendant from downloading and distributing the films would not deserve the public interest. On the contrary, the public has a compelling interest in protecting copyright owners' marketable rights to their work so as to encourage the production of creative works. Accordingly, the court respectfully recommends that plaintiff's request for an injunction prohibiting defendant from further infringement be granted. What's the point of an injunction? Well, now the defendant is enjoined or, or the injunction prevents them from infringing under a court order. So if there's further infringement, now you violated a court order, not just violated the law and get a damages award, but you also are brought underneath the court's uh, inherent ability to there's really a whole host of remedies. The court could order additional fines well above copyright's statutory damage regime, uh, all the way up to contempt of court. Uh, somebody could be thrown in jail for failing to obey a court order. So it's possible this could become a basic criminal matter if the defendant fails to obey the court order. Strike three further requests that the injunction include an order requiring destruction of all copies of and digital media files relating to plaintiff's works in his possession. The Copyright Act authorizes courts to order the destruction of unauthorized copies of copyrighted works. Accordingly, the court respectfully recommends granting plaintiff's request. Strike 3 further seeks costs $400 for service and court costs. It's actually kind of low. This is authorized. Plaintiff has submitted its attorney's declaration about the costs. It's remarkable to me that they didn't ask for further costs and higher attorney's fees, but I guess $108,000 is enough money for them. Finally, they seek post-judgment interest, which the court will grant. For the reasons set forth herein, the court respectfully recommends that Strike Three's motion for default judgment be granted. Strike three is directed to serve a copy of this order on defendant via first class mail and file proof of service by ECF within three days. Any objections to this report and recommendation must be filed with the clerk within 14 days. Failure to file objections within this period waives the right to appeal the district court's order. And that was November 12th, 2020. And the court did adopt the report and recommendations awarding damages and cost against defendant for $108,790 plus the injunction. So yeah, that's a lot of money for what's a really easy thing to do. I, I've used BitTorrent myself in the past and I, I'm glad that I stopped before these cases became a thing um, because I would have been just as guilty. I, I, I think I learned how to use the Adobe Suite by pirating it back in the early 2000s. And I can say that without any fear of retribution because copyright only has a three-year statute of limitations and therefore Adobe can't come after me for having admitted the piracy of their products back in the early 2000s. And I'm currently a, a paying customer. I pay for Adobe now. I, I pay for you know, other copyrighted material that I consume. Um, I, I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be a copyright attorney that ends up, you know, a copyright attorney charged with copyright infringement. I don't, I don't want to be that headline. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good boy now. And this is remarkable to me, though, because this is a super easy way to incur hundreds of thousands of dollars of potential liability. This case could have easily been a $2,250 per title case. So this could have been a 225,000. This could have been a $325,000 case if I do my math correctly. So, and all it takes is just running some software and clicking on some things on, on the internet. And suddenly you've incurred quarter million dollars in liability or sometimes even more. So be super careful out there. 
And if you do get one of these notices, they, they arrive as a notice from your service provider, notice of a subpoena, and it says strike three holdings on it. Uh, that's the kind of case that I defend. So, you know, I'm sorry that you might have to give me a call if you get one of those notices. Uh, if you don't, if you don't want to get that notice, then you need to not be infringing, especially not upon the works held by Strike Three Holdings, which is three particular adult entertainment firms that you can see in that notice that was earlier in this video, the exhibit that we showed earlier in the video. So yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Do you think that that's really what's necessary to deter this kind of piracy? I don't think that there's a strong connection between $750 per title and the actual value and damage to the plaintiff's works. And then let me add to it that this plaintiff typically doesn't send warning letters to these individual defendants. They don't get a cease and desist or a DMCA takedown. Their ISP doesn't get notified to like put them on warning or something. You're gonna get sued if you don't stop. Instead, they just get sued. So it almost seems like maybe the plaintiff is out for a profit motive themselves in conducting these lawsuits this way. But, you know, I can't really speak to what the internal operations of Strike Three's uh, lawsuit system are. Certainly, they could genuinely be seeking to deter copyright infringement by going after large damage awards. But I can tell you from my experience that a large number of my clients are surprised that this was even possible and couldn't have been deterred because they didn't have any notice of this being such a heinous offense. I, I, I can't say crime because it's not being prosecuted as a crime. This is entirely civil prosecution. But if you consider the criminal side of these kinds of things, if you stole 145 movies, you still wouldn't get hit with $108,000 in liability. Of course, if you stole 145 movies, you could be going to jail. It's some kind of, definitely some kind of felony. But, um, there's some kind of disconnect between the amount of statutory damages awarded in these kinds of cases. But you saw the judge's reasoning. There, there is some legal basis for this and, and not really a whole lot of no legal basis for it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this the appropriate punishment or is this an appropriate deterrent for this kind of piracy? The other side of this then is, do companies bring this upon themselves by not making their content more widely available? But remember that Strike Three's a holding company and, and the, the brands that they're holding do actually offer a reasonably priced subscription. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to speak good about them or anything, but I believe it's a $240 a year unlimited subscription. So if you really wanted to download their works, you can get the high quality copies for a lot less than $108,000. So yeah, that's there's some kind of schadenfreude going on there too. It's hard to be sympathetic to the plaintiff but it's also kind of hard to forgive the defendant who wantonly infringes on copyrights. So where do you think the balance is in between those two outcomes? No deterrent for the piracy versus $108,000 of deterrent in a basic minimum damages case. Shouldn't there be something in between? Is the case act the middle ground there? A copyright small claims court? Should more of these kinds of cases be going through the small claims court and getting maybe a smaller damages award, but more frequent enforcement? I don't know, but this is the world we live in now. So be careful and don't download Really, really don't commit copyright infringement, but uh, definitely don't download this company's videos through BitTorrent. And, unless, of course, you want to be calling me for all the wrong reasons. Thank you for watching. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel here on YouTube. You can also find us on Floatplane and on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m.
Our channel is community supported by your monthly financial contributions on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsors.com slash law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Thank you to the following $50 plus supporters in the month of February. Joe Tyson, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Spirit Bear, Andy, Benjamin Hytoff, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Rudolph Bescherer Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Brandon Abel, Torpedon, Sovereign Titison, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, RDH Dragon, Nathan McCarty, and Winter Grill. And thank you as well to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on your screen. I hope everyone has a great week. I will see you in the videos that drop. I love you all. Bye. Good boat.